Do you want to install backup lights on your trailer so it lights it up nice when you're backing up? I'm going to show you how. Stick around. Hey folks, Keith here at Chicken Thigh Fishing. Welcome back to the Getting It Done video series. We're going to get something else done today. Today, we are going to install LED backup lights, reverse lights, on our bass boat trailer. If you're like me, you spend a lot of time fishing at night, and you're loading your boat, and you're unloading your boat, and you're driving around different places that are not well lit during hours of darkness necessarily you always have to back up in unlit boat ramps or on trails if you're going into a pond that's in the woods or something like that and it can get a little bit hairy when you're backing up and you can't see very much behind you and, and let's face it every once in a while you bump into a trash can you bump into a tree you clip something with your tail light whether it's another trailer or anything it happens to the best of us some places I go have big boulders along sides of trails and stuff and if you're trying to back up for some reason eventually you're gonna back up and shatter a tail light or something like that or even worse damage somebody else's car or trailer so when you don't have backup lights on your trailer all you really have is the tail lights the illumination from your existing tail lights and brake lights and the brake lights and or whatever other lights you have on your truck or your vehicle and a lot of times that's just not sufficient depending on how dark an area you are in for example every time i come home i have to back my boat into my awning i have an awning that i keep my boat under and you know on a really dark night sometimes you can't see very well this is what it looks like now when i back up into my awning So we're going to improve that. Like I said, a lot of times I'm in places that have unlit boat ramps and, you know, they're not even really boat ramps. A lot of places I go have trails and then a dirt ramp into the water. And, you know, you go to a major lake with major boat ramps, they're going to be well lit. It's really never a problem. But sometimes you're in places where you could use some extra light. So for that reason, I'm going to install LED backup lights. And the ones I chose are from Southern Light LED. We're going to put them in. So let's go see what happens. So in order to install these LED lights on the back end of our trailer, we're going to necessarily have to be fishing electrical wire through our trailer and up to the front end so we can ultimately connect those lights. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove my tail lights so I get access to inside the channels of my trailer. And removing the tail lights are as simple as removing these nuts and washers. So I'm going to catch the washers there and we'll lay those out right here. So we don't lose them. And then so I can remove the tail light. And when you pull the wiring out, most of the time what you'll see is a plug and play clip here. 
and that just plugs your existing trailer wiring into the tail lights. So just so I don't accidentally step on my tail light or anything, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that. Now I have my wiring and I have an opening down the channel so I can fish some wire through which we're going to get to. And I'll put my tail lights aside and we'll do the same thing on the other side so we have both the tail lights removed. So now the first thing we're going to need to do is decide where we're going to put these lights. And in my case I've predetermined the position where I'm going to put them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on either side of my third brake light here, my tail light. I'm going to put one right here and I'm going to put the other on this side. And these are super bright lights so they're really going to illuminate any area that you're backing into. And so what we're going to do is install the lights and we're going to wire them and we're going to connect them to our reverse lights. So anytime we put the truck in reverse, those lights will be activated. So after we decide where we want to put the lights, we're going to necessarily have to drill three holes because you're going to have to have one hole for the wiring to go through and then two holes for the screw holes. And so we're going to drill pilot holes so it's that much easier to screw in some self-drilling stainless steel screws to affix the actual light to the trailer beam. So we're going to drill three holes, we're going to mark the locations where we're going to drill those, and we're going to make them big enough on two occasions to fit the screws in. It's a lot easier to drill them into the metal frame that way. And then we're going to make sure we have one big enough to put the wiring through. I'm going to make sure it's not too snug so we don't have any wires rubbing on the sharp edges of the metal that we drill through and hopefully we'll be able to fit a nice rubber grommet in there that will further protect the wiring from getting chafed or cut. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I measure exactly where I want these lights and then I'm going to mark where I'm going to drill those holes. We'll get drilling. Okay so I determined that what I'm going to do is mount these here in the middle of the back cross beam. I'm gonna put them in here and I'm gonna line them up four inches. The end of it's gonna be four inches from the end of this light here. And so I'll have them equidistant on both sides. And then top to bottom, I'm gonna put it right in the middle of the beam. So I'm gonna go ahead and position it by hand and mark where I need the hole to be. And so after measuring the back of the light, I know that the wire hole is going to have to be three and three eighths inches from the end of where we mount it. So I'm going to mark four inches out from that light. And then I'll measure the middle, which is going to be an inch and a half. So now I've marked where the end of the light is going to be, like so. So I'm going to want to drill a hole for the wires three and three eighths inches from the end there. So we'll measure three and three eighths inches. And I'll make sure that's in the middle as well, right at one and a half inches. And so now I have my mark where I'm going to drill the hole for the wiring. Okay, now I'm just going to repeat that process on the other side. I'm going to mark it up carefully so they look good, so they're in the same position. And then we'll be ready to connect a connecting wire to the wiring on those two lights and fish it through that cross beam to the side beam of the trailer where we can further work on it. So now that I have those holes drilled where I know the wiring is going to go into that cross beam, I realize that the wiring that comes with the light isn't going to be sufficiently long enough to reach from one light to the next light. So I cut myself a length of connecting wire, red and black, that I had on hand so it is ample length for me to reach 
from one hole to the other. And then once I reach one hole to the other, then I can connect the second light to it. And so once I have that first light with the connecting wire connected to the second light, I will then be able to run a wire to the corner of the beam here where I can then pull it out, make all the connections I need to the long connecting wire that's going to go have to go up the entire length of the trailer to the trailer tongue where we're going to wire it in. So what I'm going to do is take the wires from the light and the wires from my piece of connecting wire and I'm going to connect red to red and black to black using waterproof heat shrink butt connectors and some heat shrink tubing as well. But one thing I'm going to do is when I put those two wires together and they have two butt connectors on them and some heat shrink tubing, it's going to be pretty wide and it's probably going to be too wide to fit through that hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger it and I'm going to shorten one of the wires like this and then I'm going to shorten the opposite wire on this one and that way when I connect these wires the butt connectors will be staggered so it will only be the width of one of them instead of two of them and then I should much more easily be able to fit it through the hole and fish it down that cross beam. So I'm going to take the red wire from the connecting wire and I'm going to shorten that by about two inches. So now you'll see the black end is significantly longer than the red end. Now I'm going to strip the end of that red wire so we have bare wire showing. And then I'm going to go to the light and I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make sure that the red wire is longer and the black wire is shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten that black wire and then restrip the end of it. There you go. So what I'm going to use to connect the wires are heat shrink butt connectors and you can get them anywhere. I'll put a link to Amazon where you can get a kit with a ton of them in it, different sizes for different gauge wires. And this one includes four different sizes and it's got, oh shoot, 200 pieces in there. So this package of butt connectors will last you an awful long time for work you do on your boat or your car or your house. Now over the butt connectors, we're also gonna put heat shrink tubing. We're gonna kinda double it up just to give it extra protection, realizing that this is gonna be submerged. And so, like the butt connectors, you can get a kit of different size heat shrink tubing that can go over different gauges of wires and butt connectors and whatnot. And that just adds a little extra protection to it. And so I also have the heat shrink tubing linked in the description below the video. So first we'll go ahead and we'll connect red to red. And what we're going to do is take the red bare wire end and put that into the heat shrink connector. So when you use a butt connector, you want to make sure that the bare wire goes into the metal sleeve that's in the middle of the butt connector. Make sure it gets right in there. And then hold it in place and then go ahead and crimp it. And all you're doing is tightening that down into the metal, like so. And so then I will take the corresponding red wire. I'm going to trim that bare wire up a little bit. From the light. And I'm going to put that in the other end. And I'm going to hold that in place and crimp that end as well. And so now I have red on red crimped together. And so now we will take black and do the same thing. And so now we have red and black connected. And as you can see, I staggered them so they weren't right on top of each other because I was worried that then they will be too fat to stick through that hole I drilled. So by shortening one wire on one side and now the wire on the other side kind of go in single file so it's only the width of one butt connect. So I'm going to add a heat shrink tube on the black side. And actually you should put the heat shrink tubing on the wire beforehand so it's already on the wire so you can then just slide it on. But since I haven't connected this end to anything I can just put it on now. And now we're going to add some heat.
Okay, so we're shrunk up nice there. Then I'm going to bring my heat shrink tubing over it. And again, that's just to afford extra protection to that connection. And we'll go ahead and apply heat to that heat shrink tubing. And so there we have our black connection, nice and waterproof. So now we will do the same for our red connection. Okay, so now we have our first light connected to a connecting wire. And now that will be long enough to go from the hole I drilled on the left side to the hole I drilled on the right side. And so what I'm going to do is take a fish tape, a rigid fish tape, and I'm going to fish it through that hole and try to get it to come out that hole. So in order to fish it through, I'm going to take my fish tape and I'm going to take the ends of the wires that I want to go through. And we're going to tape those down nice and tight with some electrical tape. And so now I'll be able to stick that end of the fish tape through the left hole and hopefully get it to the other hole on the other side. Okay, so in fishing it across, I found it was too difficult to get past the middle area. And the reason was because all the wiring that goes to this light was kind of bunched up in there. So I removed this light, which is only held in by two screws, and I pulled out the wiring. And this is the hole that is in there for that wiring. And so I got the fish tape down to here. And so what I'm going to do is pull it out here and then reinsert it to get it to the hole because I don't think I can get it all the way over there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and try to pull it out of there. So now I have the wire from the left light going out and coming out this hole. So I will pull it off of the fish tape. And we'll pull the fish tape back out. And now it should be that much easier for me to get it just from here to here. I like it when a plan comes together. So now I can pull this through here. Okay, so now I'm going to have to connect the other light to this and then a connecting wire to go the rest of the way on the cross beam and there's an opening under here where I can pull it out and then connect it to the long wire that's going to go all the way down. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the second light and so I'll put a buck connector on the red wire and we'll crimp that into place. And I will put one on the black wire and crimp that and secure it. And so now on the other end of this buck connector, not only are we going to connect that light to it, but I've also got another piece of connecting wire because I have to get from this hole to the end of the cross beam here. So in the red buck connector, prior to connecting them, I'm going to take the wires to the second light and I'm going to put a heat shrink tube over them. That way after I make the butt connections I can go ahead and double protect them by putting heat shrink wrap over that. But I got to make sure I put that on first because you can't put it on after you make the connections. So we'll just bring that down the wire there. And then we'll make our butt connections. We're going to put the red in, crimp it down securely, we're going to put the black in, and 
and crimp that down. Now we're going to connect the single red to two reds. One red is going to be the connecting wire that's going to get us from this hole to the end of the cross beam. And the other one is going to be the red from the connecting wire from the first light. So we'll take those two reds, we'll twist the ends together, get them right in their butt connector there, and crimp those down securely. And then we will do the same thing with the black. The single black wire coming from the second light, the black wire coming from the connecting wire to get across the cross beam, and the black wire from the connecting wire from the first light. And we'll crimp that down. And those are in good and snug. So we'll shrink those buck connectors down with some heat. And now we can slide our heat shrink down over those buck connectors to double protect them. If I can get them inside, I probably should have used a bigger piece of heat shrink tubing. But we'll see if we can get them in there. Well, see, I made a mistake there, and I should have staggered those so they were only one wide instead of two wide because the piece of heat shrink tubing I just used isn't big enough to go over both of them. So what we'll do for those connections is seal them with electrical. So that should do the trick. And rather than cut that heat shrink tubing off and waste it, I'll just shrink it down and it'll add a little protection on that section of wire. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to fish this wire across the cross beam and right under here there's a hole. And we'll put our fish tape through. Okay, so I got that fish tape through. And so now I'm going to take the connecting wire that I want to get across that cross beam. And I'm going to tape that to the fish tape. And now I should be able to pull that wire right through. But I'm going to be careful not to rub it on the edges of the metal. So I don't chafe it. And so now we're out the other side and I can bring the wire through all right so we're doing pretty good now we have the left light in connected to the right light and a connecting wire going from the right light out the end of the cross beam so now what we'll do is we'll mount the actual lights to the cross beam and then we'll be able to work on this end of the wire which we will ultimately connect to the front of the trailer. So in order to get this light in proper position, I'm gonna line it up, get it as level and straight as I can, and then I'm gonna use a drill bit to drill a pilot hole through the screw holes so I can then put the self-drilling screws in the pilot holes. So now that I have the first pilot hole in, I will put the screw in. I'm not going to tighten that first screw in all the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to level this so it's straight, because I'm funny like that. And then drill the second pilot hole, then I can tighten down both screws. Okay, so the first light is installed and level. And now I will go over and reinstall that third brake light in the middle there. Push the wire in there and then we will go and level and install the second light.
Okay, so there we have both of the lights installed. All right, so I'm pretty happy with those lights in the positions that they're in. And now, you got to wire up to the front of the boat. So hopefully there's no surprises there. So what I'm going to do here is use a longer fish tape. And I'm going to open up the uh, swing tongue here so I can access the channel. And we'll try to go right down to the back. Okay, so it took me a little while to fish that wire through. I ended up being able to send my fish tape through the back and out the front, connect it to the connecting wire, the southern LED light sent with the lights. And that's this here. And so I brought it back out here, but then I had a little bit of a change of plans. The reason is, is I didn't put a long enough connecting wire on that last light that I put in here and so it doesn't reach out the back here but right here I found that there's an opening at the end it was covered by a reflective sticker but I saw an indentation and so there's a machined uh, factory opening right here at the end of the cross beam so I just popped through that reflective sticker and I'll just replace that and so now I have that red and black wire coming right out here and there's plenty of room for me to make those connections so we have that left light in the right light in and we have them uh, connected to this connection wire and now we're going to connect that to the long wire that goes to the front of the boat and this should be the last connection we have to make at the back of the boat so I'm going to go ahead and strip these wires back So inside the protective wire loom here, we have a red and a black. And so I'll strip the red and the black on the connection wire. And now that I have those stripped back, I'm going to put a shrink wrap on the black wire. And then we'll make that black to black connect with a butt connector. Crimp it down. And we'll make the connection to the black. And we'll crimp that side. We'll put some heat on that butt connector. All right, so we got a nice solid connection there. Now we're going to do the same thing on the reds. Okay, and so now we're connected to the long connection wire that goes all the way up the right hand side of the trailer out the tongue. So I'm going to go up front and pull out the slack. Here's that wire coming out the front and I'm just going to pull that slack up. Okay so now that we're good on the back we got to take care of the front. And what we're going to have to do on the front is put a new seven-way plug in. So let's talk a little bit about seven-way plugs and the reason why I have to put a new one in and I'm going to explain this in detail for the benefit of those who don't know about seven-way plugs and who haven't done any of this type of wiring before because there's a few things you're going to want to understand it's not very complicated but you need somebody to explain it to you if you've never heard it before so this is your seven-way plug the reason it's a seven-way is because it has seven terminal openings here in the housing six that are in a circle and the seventh is the center pin. Now I have a seven way here, but only four of the terminals are active. So if you take a look in here, you can see that there are metal terminals only in four of the seven 
openings here and that is the way that most bolts come from the factory the reason for that is the four functions that are served by this plug are the ground the right hand turn and stop the left hand turn and stop and your running lights or your marker lights and your tail lights so you have four functions there now one thing you're going to want to know is that there are generally two types of seven-way plugs that most people use there are some other types but they're much less common the two that we're going to talk about are the standard SAE seven-way plug and a standard RV seven-way plug so basically you're going to have to know what you have to begin with and in most cases you're going to have a standard SAE plug let's take a look at a diagram of the standard SAE so you get an idea of what I'm talking about so here in this diagram you will see that the standard SAE has a brown wire a red or a black wire purple green yellow blue and white the brown runs the tail lights and the running lights the red or the black has uh, is a 12 volt auxiliary hookup purple is for backup lights or reverse lights if you are so equipped now most of the time the trailer is not going to come equipped with backup lights and that's something that's an aftermarket thing just like we're doing today green is for the right turn and stop yellow is for the left turn and stop light blue is for brakes if you have a trailer that's equipped with brakes that blue wire would be the brake controller and then white is the ground and so now let's take a look at the differences between a SAE standard and an RV standard and the differences are pretty significant in that they have by and large the same colors but they have different functions for the colors so take a look at this on the RV you have brown black green yellow blue white and red wires on the RV the brown is the right turn and stop the black is the 12 volt auxiliary hookup the green is the tail lights and the running lights the yellow would be reverse or backup lights blue would be brakes if your trailer is equipped with brakes white is ground of course and red would be left hand turn and stop so you can see that there are differences here so let's take a look at what I have here on my boat from the factory you'll see that my plug has this wire loom that contains the wires inside so the wires are connected to the four active terminals of this seven-way plug and they go through the swing tongue of the trailer and they come out here so you can see these are the wires that are coming out through here and that's the end of the wire loop. but you may be confused right off the bat you see that there are six wires coming out but you only notice that there are four terminals connected in here so you'll be asking yourself I don't get it how come there's only there's four terminals active on my seven-way plug and yet I have six wires coming out you'll see here that I have two brown two white a yellow and a green the reason for that is illustrated right here you will see here that the initial brown is branched off into two browns and the initial white is branched off into two whites and so that's why you have six wires coming out the other end because the brown and the white got doubled up spliced up here in front and the reason for that is on this trailer this is a standard SAE hookup so the brown is the tail lights and the running lights and the white is the ground so they have to split off in two to go down each side of the boat so you have a brown and a white and a yellow going down one side and a brown and a white and a green going down the other side and that controls your left hand turn stop lights tail lights and your right hand turn stop lights tail lights so that explains to you why you would see six wires coming out the back here so I know that since I have a yellow wire and a green wire going back to the back of the boat to my taillights 
they are my left hand turn and right hand turn lights therefore i know based on the diagram we just looked at that i have a standard sae however the new one i bought is an rv now one thing to note is there's really no difference it doesn't matter which one you use you just have to be aware of the different colors and functions i just happened to buy this because i liked it it was heavy duty and it was cheap it's got a very thick wire and i like it so i'm changing from an sae to an rv standard seven-way plug so because i'm doing that i have to take care to make sure i make the right connections now i should add here that you may not in fact have to get a new plug the reason that i have to get a new seven-way plug is because my old one is molded it's one piece and so you cannot get at the connections for the terminals inside you may have a plug that has a set screw somewhere here and by undoing that set screw you can remove the front face of the plug which would then give you access to the terminals inside and so then all you would have to do is remove that face and attach your new wire that's coming from the reverse lights we put on to the center pin on your seven-way plug and then you can replace the cap and there's no need to get a new one so the reason I had to get a whole new seven-way plug is because I have a molded one which you can't get inside or at least I don't know of any way to get inside without destroying it so if you have one that has a set screw and you can remove the face then you don't need to get a new plug altogether so in a nutshell what we are going to do is connect our grounds to our ground which remains white on the RV standard we're going to connect our running lights and tail lights which on this one are brown but if you remember from the diagram I showed you on the RV the tail lights and the running lights are green so our brown wires are going to attach to green on this one the green wire here is our right hand turn and stop on the SAE but on the RV right hand turn and stop is brown so we're going to connect our green to brown our yellow wire on this SAE is left hand turn and stop but on the RV seven way plug left hand turn and stop is the red wire so yellow is going to have to connect to red now blue we're not going to connect because I do not have a trailer that has brakes so I have no need for a brake controller and I have no need to use the black which is your 12 volt auxiliary so we're not going to use blue in black we're going to use five wires and the reason we have five and not four like we do here is because we just added reverse lights so on an RV reverse lights are yellow so our brand new wire that is coming out of here out of the front that is connected to the new lights we just installed is going to connect to ground because it has a ground and a positive so it's going to connect to ground and yellow so in a nutshell what we're going to do is remove the old plug and connect the new plug and we're going to do so taking care to make sure we make the correct connections since we're changing colors same functions just different colors and we're adding one more wire because we're going to be using reverse lights now we're still not going to use black or blue so let's get at it so the first thing I'm going to do is take my old seven-way plug and I'm going to cut it off where they spliced into two browns and two whites. And then I'm going to go ahead and expose these wires here. So you'll see here that we have the white ground, the yellow left-hand turn, the brown tail lights and running lights, the blue brakes which are not in use, and the green right hand turn and stop lights. So I don't have to worry about blue so I'm not going to do anything with that. And I'm going to take these four and I'm going to strip them back. Now this is the tag end of the unused blue wire and I'm not going to use that so I can get rid of that. And so now we have the four that we have in use currently. So now I'm going to take the wires that we're going to use on the RV standard plug 
and I'm going to go ahead and cut those back. So we're going to use yellow because yellow is reverse. We're going to use red because red is left hand turn and stop. We're going to use brown because that's going to be right hand turn and stop. We're going to use green because that's our tail lights and running lights. And we're going to use white because white is our ground. So I'm not going to bother stripping back the blue and the black because those aren't going to be in use. And now we're ready to make our initial connections. So we'll pick one to begin with and we'll start off with brown. Now brown on our existing one is tail lights and running lights. So I'm going to go ahead and put a shrink rack tube over that and then we're going to connect brown to green on the RV because green is tail lights and running lights on the RV. So we'll start off with a buck connector and we'll go ahead and crimp that and then we will connect to green and crimp that. Now we'll apply our heat and once we've shrunk up that buck connector we'll go ahead and slide our shrink wrap over it and then we'll apply heat to that. So there you have our first connection from the old wiring to the new standard RV seven-way plug. And so now we're just going to go ahead like we talked about and I'm going to match up each wire with the appropriate wire on the new plug. I'm going to connect them with a buck connector and then I'm going to put a shrink wrap over each one of those connections. So I made my first three connections. I have brown to green, yellow to red, green to brown. Now we're going to take the other end of our connecting wire that we ran all the way from those new reverse lights in the back up through the tongue of the trailer. I'm going to take this end of it and it's coming out right here and I'm going to stick it through here. So now that I have that through, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of slack but I'm going to be able to cut off a little bit of this length. So now this is going to be the reverse lights because this is what we just installed and it's connected back there. So I'm going to strip these wires back and I will have a red and a black, a positive and a ground. So now our positive to our new reverse lights is going to go to the yellow, which is the reverse lights on the RV standard seven-way plug. And so the last meaningful connection that we will have to make is white to white, which is ground to ground, but we're going to add the black wire from our new reverse lights in to those grounds. So one side will have this black wire and a white wire and the other side will have a white wire. So there you have it. Now we have our new plug connected and remember the blue wire and the black wire are not in use. We're using five wires now instead of four. White, red, brown, yellow, and green. One, two, three, four, five because we added the reverse to our four that we had before. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna neaten this all up in a nice package. I'm gonna tape everything up individually, then I'm gonna tape it up all together, and we'll be ready to plug her in. Okay, so once again, there's the finished lights on the back. And I tightened up that front, made it all nice and neat up there, taped everything up looks good everything works fine so now we'll wait till the sun goes down we'll see how those things look when it's dark out 
So remember, this is what it looked like when I backed up without those new lights, with just my tail lights from my truck. And this is what it looks like with our new backup lights that we just installed. Wow, what a difference. Wow, what a difference. I mean, that was huge. Looking in your side view and your rear view mirrors, I could see so much better. I'm really glad I did that, and I think those are going to come in very handy for me. So if you're looking to put backup lights on your bass boat trailer, I hope this video was a help to you. Hey, we'll see you next time, and until then, stay fishing, my friends.